day. Look what we found, Aunt Fanny. Not us, Dick. Timmy found it. Oh, children, do be careful. You'll drag all the dirt into the kitchen. That's not dirt, Aunt Fanny. These clumps of earth may contain a great discovery. Oh, I don't know, children. We could examine the fragments more closely with a nail file. You can have one. I've got an old one somewhere. I think I left it in the annex last time. Thanks, Mother. You're the best. Here's Aunt Fanny's nail file. Careful, Dick. Very careful. All right, all right. I'm taking care. That looks like a handful of pottery fragments. They are pottery fragments, Anne. Great. We kick up all that fuss because of a handful of pottery fragments. Don't be so impatient, Anne. Maybe all the pieces fit together. The pieces look as if they might belong to a vessel. Maybe we can put all the pieces back together again. I would love to, but it doesn't make any sense like that. Great, Dick. Another two pieces that fit together. Great, Dick. Another two pieces that fit together. These two pieces should fit. These two pieces should fit. Great, Dick. Another two pieces that fit together. Great, Dick. Another two pieces that fit together. Great, Dick. Another two pieces that fit together.
We've done it. The vase is complete. Well done, brother. But it's absolutely beautiful. Well done, Dick. Come on. We'll show it to Uncle Quentin. I wonder what he'll say. Good idea, Julian. I'm curious myself. Look, Uncle Quentin. Timmy found this vase at the dig. Really? I'd like to have a closer look at it, Dick. Of course, Uncle Quentin. Here you are. Hmm. Very interesting. Now we have evidence that there were Romans here once. Mr. Brown is bound to be very happy. Not so fast, Dick. I don't believe that this piece of pottery is in fact Roman. What else could it be? It's probably just another clay jar from the neighbouring village. They've dumped quite a few things over there. Are you sure, Uncle Quentin? Sure? One can never be sure. But if it's an ancient jar, Dick, then it probably dates back to the Celts. I think you're wrong this time, Uncle Quentin. That's quite an assumption there, young man. I think I saw a similar vessel in George's history book once, and that was from Roman times. Look it up in the book first, young man, before you make these assertions. I'll do that, Uncle Quentin. All right, then. If you can prove to me that the vase dates back to the Romans, then I will owe you a favour. After all, such commitment in the interest of science must be rewarded. In that case, I'd better go now and look for proof. You do that, Dick. Well, what did Uncle Quentin say? He doesn't believe the vase is Roman. We have to prove it to him first. And I'll need your history book for that, George. No problem. I think I've found it. We can find the proof we need in here. Here's a double page comparing Celtic and Roman householder utensils. This picture looks exactly like our vase. Yes, Anne. You were right. The two vessels look almost alike. What does it say on the right next to the picture? Is it Roman or Celtic? It says here, the vase in the picture was made by a Roman craftsman. Terrific! We can use this to prove that our vase has Roman origins. Let's go and see Father. I'm dying to know what he thinks about this. Look what I've brought you, Uncle Quentin. So what is it this time, Dick? I've got proof that the vase is in fact of Roman origin. Well, let's have a look then. Hmm... Well, yes, could be. Hmm... They do look very similar, Uncle Quentin. You're right! Congratulations, you've convinced me! You've found more in a single day than Mr. Brown has in the entire fortnight. I see you've recorded everything properly. He'll be very pleased when he returns. Then Mr. Brown was right after all. There actually was a Roman settlement here in the past. Dick, I do owe you a favour now. If you should need it, just come to see me and I'll see what I can do for you. But please excuse me now, I've still got some work to do. Hey, 
Hey, everybody. We've done it. If we should ever need something from your father, George, then just let me handle it. Well done, Dick. We'll do that. That's super, Dick. Just listen to me now. What do you think of going to the dig again? Who knows when Mr. Brown will return? Perhaps we can find even more. I don't know, George. We could also damage valuable discoveries by mistake. Oh, come on now, Anne. Uncle Quentin even congratulated us on our expertise. If we continued to be as careful, we're sure not to break anything. Dick's right. If we're careful and respect the out-of-bounds area, nothing can happen. Timmy, look! Timmy, look! We have to look more thoroughly. Maybe we'll find even more. We've combed the entire area now. I don't think that we will find anything here. Timmy doesn't seem to be able to find anything either. Right. I don't think we'll find anything here either. I'm dying to know what's behind the fence. Don't even think about it, Georgina. That's far too dangerous. Oh, Anne, do you always have to be so scared? You know we've been told by everybody not to go there. There's nothing to it. I'll just hop over and have a look around. I'll be back in ten minutes. Julian, do something. What can I do, Anne? Dick's curiosity's got the better of him once again. Dick, have a quick look and come straight back. Do you hear? Yes, Julian. Don't worry. I'll be right back. That's me. Dick can go and I can't. Now you should be able to push the board aside.
there you are, at long last, Dick. We were beginning to worry. Just guess what I saw. Don't keep us guessing. Tell us. There are two men inside the hut, fast asleep. That's not terribly exciting, is it? They must be Mr. Brown's two assistants. But the excavations have been interrupted for the time Mr. Brown's away. So what are the two still doing here? And why are they sleeping in broad daylight? They must have been up all night. Julian, you're right. There's something wrong here. We should keep an eye on them. But how? We can't just stand here all day. We still need a suitable observation post, of course. We should go to the top of the lighthouse. Brilliant, Dick. That's the answer. From there, we can see everything without entering the area that is out of bounds. Hold on, Dick. Aunt Fanny won't be thrilled at the prospect of us all spending the night at the lighthouse. Unfortunately, you're right. Only one of us need go. I'll volunteer for that. Jolly good. And you can tell us all about it in the morning. Hello, Mr. Luma. Have you made any interesting discoveries over the last few nights? Hello, young man. Why, what do you mean? Oh, uh, well, something unusual. No, oh, I'll have to disappoint you there. The only thing that I watch is the sea. And nothing exciting has been happening there. Mr. Luma, I've always wanted to visit the lighthouse with you. Could I join you tonight? But, Dick, I don't think you would find it very interesting. I just watched the sea the whole time. All night long. Even so, I really would be interested. And I could stay all night long. Well, young man, it's not that easy. Lighthouse keeping is a very responsible job. You have to know all the navigation signals as well as Morse code. Every single signal? Really? Oh, well, for a single night, Morse code would do. But you'll have to pass my Morse code test to prove that you can really master it. I still have to learn it, though. Hello, Dick. Nice to see you again. Hello, Alf. Tell me, you know Morse code, don't you? Of course. Every fisherman has to know it. Do you think you could teach it to me? I'm sorry, Dick, but I just don't have the time for that right now. I've still got to get the nets ready. Oh, that's too bad. But I can lend you a book with the complete Morse code. Maybe that'll help you in your studies. Thanks a lot, Alf. You'll get it back as soon as possible. No problem, Dick. With this, I can learn Morse code in a jiffy. Bye, Alf. Bye, Dick. And say hello to the others. Well, young man, are you ready for the test? But remember, you are not allowed any help. Yes, go ahead. I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Very well, my boy. Here's the first question. How do you write ship in distress in Morse? Three dots, three dashes, three dots. Right, you passed the first test. But it really wasn't terribly difficult. Now to the second question. What does the following signal code mean? Dash, two dots, two dashes, two dashes, dash, dot, and two dashes. Timmy. Well done, young man. You seem to have studied well. Let's see if you can answer the last question as well. What's the signal code for 
End of transmission. Dot, dash, dot, dash, dot. Excellent. You've answered all questions correctly. As far as I'm concerned, you can join me in the lighthouse tonight. But will your aunt and your uncle let you? There you are at long last, Dick. We're all on tenterhooks here waiting for you. Can you spend the night at the lighthouse? Yes, but only if Aunt Fanny agrees. That was Mr. Loomer's condition. Well, Dick, that won't be so easy. Aunt Fanny's in the kitchen. Fanny, today I passed a test at Mr. Loomer's. What test are you talking about, Dick? I thought you were on holiday. It was about Morse code and how to read it. Well, that's jolly good, Dick. But why on earth are you learning Morse code? Well, I've always been interested in shipping. And besides, I've always wanted to spend a night at the lighthouse. Aha. Uh -huh. Now I see what you're getting at. You're now going to ask me to allow you to spend the night there. Oh yes, Aunt Fanny. Please. My dear boy, I really can't give you permission for that. Your uncle would never agree to it either. Perhaps I can convince him. Don't set your hopes too high. But if he really does let you, then of course I will as well. Not now. I'm terribly busy. Uncle Quentin, I only wanted to ask you for that favour you owe me. Oh, those children are such a nuisance. Oh well then, come on in, but make it short. Well, young man, what can I do for you? Uncle Quentin, can I spend the night at the lighthouse? Mr. Loomer says it's all right because I know Morse code. Really, Dick? What on earth do you want to do at the lighthouse? I've got to do a project about astronomy after the holiday. Up there I would be able to see the sky better than down here, wouldn't I? All right, I agree. But you won't see much with the naked eye. That would be pointless. Do you think I could have your telescope? Exactly. I thought so too. You really do seem keen. All right then. But there's a wing screw missing on the telescope tripod, and you can't use the telescope without the tripod. Where's this wing screw? I must have lost it somewhere the last time I was looking at the stars. If you can find a replacement, or maybe even the original screw, you've got my permission to do your stargazing. I see you found it! Amazing! In that case, I wish you a clear sky tonight. Thank you very much, Uncle Quentin. I've done it. Uncle Quentin gave me his permission. And he gave me his telescope as well. Well, your uncle does seem to be having a good day today. Yes, 
I think so too. Don't worry, Aunt Fanny. I'll be back again tomorrow. Oh well. See you tomorrow then. Well done, Dick. Good evening, Dick. I see you've managed to get your aunt's permission. Let's make our way upstairs then. Yes, please. I'm already really excited. I'd better assemble the telescope. What's going on? Isn't that someone at the dig? <laughs> 